2015 was a momentous year uh, that really put mobile video into the spotlight. We saw offerings like Snapchat coming out with Discover, um, Verizon's Go90, T-Mobile introducing Binge On, kind of a different yeah. angle. Um, and you know, I think what we're really seeing is media companies, digital services providers, operators, tech providers, all kind of converging on mobile video, um, recognizing the, the value that it brings uh, in terms of getting unprecedented reach and uh, you know, immediacy and, and capacity for personalization. So the panel today is going to look at how companies from across the industry are taking advantage of this growth in mobile video to uh, engage and delight consumers, to innovate on the video medium, and to you know, monetize through old and new business models. The exciting thing I think we're doing at YouTube, in fact, along with everyone here on this panel, is we're driving this mobile video explosion, right? And I don't think it could be more exciting than that. There's lots of interesting stuff we're doing around the edges, but when you fundamentally look at what we're doing is we are really driving some deep, deep change in a market. Um, and by any measure, you know, certainly from the YouTube side, when you look at it, the growth is, is phenomenal. We're growing at, our growth is accelerating. We're up to sort of 50, 50 60% year on year. Um, our, mobile, our mobile sessions are 50% longer than they were last year. The average mobile session is now about 40 minutes long. Um, and we've got 400, minutes of co sorry, 400 hours of content uploaded every minute. Um, so this is just a colossal explosion. I think what we're doing behind it, which perhaps many people may not be so familiar with, is really putting the infrastructure to make that useful to consumers, useful to brand advertisers, useful to everybody. And to make sense of that amount of video, to allow you to find the videos you want, watch the videos you want, and for them to be served in a meaningful and a relevant way, which is brand safe, which is copyright protected, all of those things um, is what Google is doing, which I find fundamentally um, exciting underneath the video explosion. Great. Thank you to all our panelists. So um, I'm going to start with a question actually directed at, at you, Dave, uh, which is from a consumer perspective. Um, can you talk about how mobile video is shifting the, the kind of consumer viewing experience? Yeah, sure. Um, and uh, no, I think the theme of this conference, Mobile is Everything, is really apt for that. Because if you think about it, um, uh, I'm, when I grew up, when I was 16, 17, if I wanted to watch pop videos, I used to have to have an appointment to view Thursday afternoons at 7.30 for half an hour, I could watch Top of the Pops. Um, and that has changed fundamentally. The way in which we actually just consume and connect has just been rewritten by mobile. So if you think about it, now we choose. We choose what we want, we choose where to watch it, and we make sure that if it's not what we want, we move on to the next thing, right? That's something else we were never able to do before. We, you know, the water cooler moment, which we always, you know, everyone used to say, did you watch this yesterday? That doesn't exist anymore. Now it's the spoiler alert. The water cooler moment has changed. So instead of saying, did you, you know, I watched this yesterday, what we do is we say, I'm at this point in this. Oh, don't tell me. You know, I'm not going to be able to watch that because you know, you're going to ruin it for me. So the water cooler moments change. The way in which we talk about the content we're watching has changed. And importantly, the, what, the way we consume, we binge. Um, and I was so glad to hear you know, what you're doing at CNN is exactly that. I don't want one snippet of news. I want the whole story. I want the back story. I want the front story. I want the, what's going to happen next. The same thing happens on YouTube, and the same thing happens on Netflix. I'm not prepared to watch one hour of one episode. I want to watch five hours of, one, of a particular series and then go to bed at three in the morning. So, you know, the three big shifts in consumer behavior are choice, they're time shifting, and they're binging. And that has all been driven by fundament fundamentally by mobile devices. Um, the interesting thing as well is we're having less sex as a result. Um, speak, <laughs> speak to me afterwards, and I'll give you the data on that as well. <laughs> YouTube and Facebook do have you know, short form content, a lot of it professionally produced, um, some of it, you know, user generated, et cetera. And there, there's been a lot of debate about you know, kind of the quote unquote quality of the inventory on these two platforms and, and you know, whether it's, you know, can be upgraded and, and what that means for how you guys participate in, in advertising dollars. Um, love to hear your opinion on that and, and whether it's something, you, you know, your companies are, are thinking about or concerned about in any way. Yeah, I mean, I, I've, I've got a slightly, well, not contentious, probably a helicopter view. Uh, you know, the, the debate of dollars per minute spent to make is completely misleading, right? I've, I've watched, um, I've seen Waterworld, right? 
That was $130 million <laughs> worth of rubbish. Um, and it took me an hour and a half to wade through. I prayed I could leave the cinema. Um, so money, you know, dollars spent does not necessarily mean quality. There's a hell of a lot of stuff that goes in behind that. And in fact, the way we should be looking at, you know, again, short form versus long form, actually, you know, where's the barrier? And who sits down and goes, I'm going to watch some long form now, or I'm going to watch some short form now. It's, that's not how consumers and viewers work. They go and say, I'm going to watch something that I like. And what we should be thinking about is, is this providing the right return to that person viewing? Is it, is it entertaining? Is it giving them the information they watch? Are they enjoying it and paying attention? Um, and then the next question is, you know, is it relevant to them? How do we make sure that when we're offering them other stuff, it's as relevant as possible and suited to that person and their needs at that moment in time? Um, and that, to me, is quality, which is the right thing to the right person in, the, in a way they would like to consume it. Um, and I think it's a complete misnomer to sort of think if I can take, in fact, you just sort of said, Nickelodeon was, was half our segments because that's how it was made for TV to work with ad breaks. You can then cut those segments down into six minute segments and give the people what they want. Equally, if I want nine hours, give me what I want. And that to me is true quality. It's not some arbitrary thing that someone made up. It's, am I getting what I want and am I paying attention? We talk a lot about how to make a great story that people want to engage in, and then they'll figure out how they want to engage with it. And we do our best to enable all the different ways that they might do that, whether it's on one device and in, in, in the content's entirety or spread over multiple, over multiple days. Um, but we focus on telling great stories or, or getting great stories to share. And so I think if you sit down and say, how do we make video for mobile? Um, you're probably not going to hit the mark. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get what? You're not going to hit the mark. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I would, I build on that. I mean, one of the questions we get asked all the time is, you know, oh, how do I, how do I tweet this for X, Y, and Z? And the point is, those are tweaks. At the heart of it, has got to be a great story, right? And if you can get a great story, whether you are making a film and script and entertainment, or you're making an ad for a brand which you hope that a consumer is going to fall in love with and buy. It's sight, sound, and motion. That's what has been so compelling. And how do you get that right story in front of the right person so they can experience it and engage with it in the best possible way? Um, and you'd be surprised how many people are looking for a quick fix rather than really interrogating the core of, actually, are my stories good enough? Right? And am I putting them in front of the right people? And am I putting them in front of enough of the right people to drive my business? And that's really what we're focusing on about. It's giving formats which allow you to really tell that story, giving you the signals that really enable you to identify not, not just, you know, ooh, she's a female 25 to 45, but actually, is she interested in buying a car right now? What, what's she intend to do? And then importantly, you've got to tell a story. Can you tell it in a way which is really going to engage and grip that person so that they can really understand whether or not that's a brand for them. And so putting that infrastructure underneath the system the scale of YouTube really creates something new, which you know, I really hope that it creates advantages for everybody. You know, it's marketers have got advantages, telcos have got advantages, um, and, and creators can make content they never made before. We're talking about innovation. Uh, the, the, the amount of innovation on YouTube is staggering. The, you know, the different kinds of content whether it's hauling or participation videos or virtual sports, I could go on. But it just funds that innovation and it's just an amazing place to spend some time. You know, a lot of the live content right now is basically a, a stream of a linear feed. I mean, looking into the future, do you guys think that you know, the, the fact that the mobile is, is something that's like always with you, you know, it, it's, it can be so immediate, um, does that open the door for new kinds of, of live content? Often life isn't that continuously interesting. You know, I'd much rather have 15 minutes edited down to five minutes of great news re reportage than actually, you know, the reporter standing outside, as I'm used to it, the Houses of Parliament in the cold going, well, there's not much happened yet, but I'll let you know when something, you know, and I think the, uh, the ability to edit and create that and turn that into multiple angles which are happening approximately now is amazing. And so to actually differentiate between how, rather than just trying to do something live, how do I make something better and more immediate and more re relevant, which is what you're doing, I think is just a fantastic example of people being creative with the medium. Um, you know, being, again, I don't really care about live. I even, I even watch sport on delay. 
You know, I start at half an hour late, I come back, put my children to bed, and then I watch the match, right? Uh, I'm not saying everybody does that, but I'm sure a lot of people do, right? So how important is it is that it is true live? Not sure. Near live, I see the value. At the end of the day, what we're beginning to see now is people are appreciating that this is a new medium and we need to learn new skills and master the new mediums and that will provide opportunities for the people who do that. Um, and you particularly see this in brand building. If you try and do what you used to do in the 50s, which is a 30 second ad to demo X, then you're gonna get overtaken. You're gonna get overtaken by people who say, you know what, I can do something else with this. I can do new stuff. And so, you know, my call out to everybody is, really understand all of the opportunities available to you. Think with a clean sheet of paper and just go, what does the consumer want? What's really gonna make them happy? And then how do I use all this amazing technology to deliver those experiences to them? You know, with the scale that you need, with the reach among the consumers you want, with the impact that's really gonna change their mind, and that's really gonna deliver the results that's gonna drive your business. Because at the end of the day, it's lovely doing media first, it's lovely doing lots of stuff, but if it's not driving your business, then you know, why do we go to work on a Monday morning? Okay, thank you. So with that, uh, we're at the end of our hour, so thank you for joining us, and big round of applause to all our fantastic panelists for the great